Hmm. Uh, that doesn't belong there. Head out of the way. Jeez, what the hell happened here? With all these sticks and twigs. Man, this car is really filthy. What the hell? I mean, I can clean this up, I guess. I mean, this isn't too bad, right? It's not too bad. It was only a tree. Yeah, mistakes were made. My least favorite kind of mistake. The one that cost me money. Yeah, so I got a story to tell you. Let's have some fun on Cars Create. Yeah, I know, it looks horrible, but I assure you it's not nearly as bad as it looks. Long story short, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> gonna talk about what happened here. I'll explain that here in a second, but we're gonna go take a walk down the road, literally down the road where this happened. And I'm gonna go over and uh, kind of paint the picture for you and uh, try to explain why that's the way it is. All right, let's go take a walk. Let's start the story about backdating everything two days ago. That's all it was, just two days ago. At least two days at the time of me filming this. It's gonna be a lot longer by the time you see it, but two days ago. Uh, it was raining and it was a colder day here in Florida. It wasn't nearly as nice as it is today. It was Saturday, went out, did some errands and whatnot, and you know, I was coming home, the sun was pretty much going down, it was getting dark, it was getting colder, the roads were still wet. Just wanted to get home, just get dinner going and enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs> As you can see here, my road, this road, every other side road around here is this sand slash dirt. I think it's like packed dirt and then just layers of sand over it just keeps getting packed down but that is like probably a majority of roads here in nowhere florida um not to say i'm in nowhere florida it's just if you're not in a developed area this is the kind of road you get and it sucks i'm just gonna refer to it as a dirt road even though it's like mostly sand i mean there's like sand everywhere it's like being on the beach sand all over but when you get up here, this road, this road's paved. And then the main road down there is paved. But every side street going off of this road is just like this. It's just dirt, gravel, whatever. And you can kind of see a little bit here about what's happening. When it rains and people, you know, come in and out, they drag all this mud and stuff out here onto this road happens all the time. It's just like a thin layer of like slushy mud sand mix that gets tracked out here on the main road. As you can see, the cars on this road are moving pretty quick. The speed limit's only 45, but it's Florida, they do 100. This is where things went really wrong really fast. Mud gets tracked out onto this road pretty much all the way down. Just a thin layer of it. So as you can tell, I mean, you can see a little bit right there that's dried up mud all the way down so when i took the turn i cut you know the front end kind of slid out and i would manage to slow down you know once the front end caught traction the back end swung out so the back end went this way and you know i'm kind of the car's kind of like in the middle here i don't want to be in the middle of traffic the car's kind of like in the middle here right we get down to this point here i you know counter steer and then this is where it really went bad s550 mustang has a horrible reputation of snap over steer and I have never experienced it. I mean, there's countless videos of people wrecking their Mustangs because of this. You know, this is the problem when people lose control of these cars and then trying to do burnouts in the road or whatever and they're showing off and you know, it gets a little squirrely. Back end goes one way, the front end goes the opposite and then it snaps in the same direction that the back end went into. So, and you just lose all control. My two years of owning this car, I have never had it happen. And I have never had a problem with keeping the thing under control until the day it all happened. Come around a turn, back end kicks out this way. Car is about right here at this point. I counter steer the back end then straightens up, then the front end snaps this way. So then the whole car is starting to go left. Well, I still have a lot of momentum because 45 mile per hour, come around that turn, and yeah, so about right here, the car is pretty much now going left on its own. I try to straighten it up, but 
it's like on ice at this point because I'm sliding on this mud slush. So I'm trying to steer the car, get the car going back this way. And I could not do it. Before I knew it, I was already in the grass. And once I got in the grass, I could not get the dang thing to turn. I like got to this point and I tried turning it and it was just sliding straight. The wheels were locking up. I couldn't get the dang thing to slow down. It was like on black ice because all this was wet. You know, it's a very thin layer of grass. It is, I mean, it's kind of slick right now as it is, weird. And you can see right here is one tire. Right here is another tire and it slid straight up over that palm bush. And I'm gonna try to sneak back in here. And you can see uh, where it met this tree right here. Kind of wish that tree wasn't there and I think I would have been all right, but that tree, uh, that tree stopped the car for me. There's still pieces of uh, the headlight and some other bits. Uh, just take this back with me. It doesn't belong here. Just throw it away. But uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a bit of my paint in the tree here. Beautiful cone of blue tree. <laughs> that was a very unfortunate situation and something I have, like I said, never experienced in this car whatsoever. Could it been avoided? Absolutely, could have have. It was my fault. I made a critical error of taking that turn way too fast. I generally have pretty high confidence in myself and with this car and keeping it under control. So, you know, with that confidence, you start not thinking about things ahead of time and you just kind of do, because you know you Nine times out of 10, get away with it. That was uh, that was my critical error for the day. I should not have done that. I should have taken, I should have slowed down. Even if I had to brake harder, it would have been a lot safer than taking the turn the way I did. I should have just slowed down and took the turn the way I should have. And uh, that would have avoided everything because taking the turn, having the back end kick out and just, it was like the perfect storm between the cold roads, you know, the tires I got on there, they're a softer compound tire, so they're gonna harden up when it gets colder. The slushy mud mix that gets all over the road here, it was just a bad scenario, really bad. And it's unfortunate because now the car is damaged, but it's not damaged to the point where it's not fixable. It's, everything is fixable. Everything is perfectly fixable that been damaged and uh, for the most part nothing serious has been damaged I'll go over the damage here in a minute but before I do that I kind of want to see if I can get my drone I got my drone with me I'm gonna see if I can fly it in and do like a POV of how the car was and kind of give you a, a vision of what I saw that day and um, just the very unfortunate characteristics of these Mustangs when they get out of control and the snap over steer, which is, by the way, frightening because you have zero control. I'm gonna whip out the drone here and see if we can get some interesting footage. Gotta get home, gotta pull. Oh, turn too fast. Oh, no. Oh. You've got mail. Okay, well, I know I'm not the best drone pilot out there, but you get the idea. I mean, that was all that was for anyways, just to kind of give you some type of visual representation of what I experienced. So, now that we're back, let's go ahead and go over the good, bad, and ugly. It looks horrible, and it really sucks because I spent a lot of time tending to the paint on this car, keeping it looking nice, and of course, you know. <laughs> As you can see, the tree pushed in the bumper here, just pushed in right on this corner. And you can see there's some wood here, some wood there, there. It just basically went right between, pushed the bumper in right between and split the fender out away from the hood and, you know, crunched the hood in right here where it met the tree. It was a very low speed impact, mind you. It, it didn't even hit that hard. The weight of the car, the forward momentum, it just basically just slowly pushed itself into the tree. And uh, you know, that's why things are the way they are. So from the damage that I am able to see only applies to, there it goes, I know I didn't latch it. To the hood, headlight, fender, and something in the wheel, we'll get to that in a second. But important part is all of this is just fine. Engine's fine, 
nothing wrong there. This upper frame rail, I think is mostly okay. It looks like, because the way the tree pushed in, it looks like it may be pushed in a little bit this way, but I think a slight pull this way gets it back where it needs to be. The radiator support here is going to need to be replaced only because this little tab that goes, yeah, there it goes, goes like that broke off that basically just helps hold the hood release cable. So this whole replace piece is gonna have to get replaced due to this. Honestly, if it was me fixing the car, I wouldn't even spend the money on it, quite honestly. Unless there's more down here that broke, which looks like it did, that holds the headlight in. Then in that case, I guess you don't really have much of a choice. Um, it looks like my air filter got squished, so that's nice. Gonna need a new one of those. Uh, the turn signal lamp looks fine, I guess. Maybe it's scratched, I can't tell. Maybe just a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to get replaced or not. The bumper, though. The bumper is going to have to get replaced. It's cracked here. The scrapes aren't that bad, but because of that crack, that's going to have to get replaced. Um, down here, the splitter is, other than these scratches here, it looks fine. Nothing else looks wrong. I don't really think there's anything else going on underneath. This piece looks fine. The grill, thankfully, looks fine because these are not easy to find right now, especially painting it with the gray. Um, and I think everything else under there is fine, I'm pretty sure. Some of these brackets that hold the fender on are bent. This one right here is going to have to get replaced. Um, this one has to get re-bent back in shape. The fender, or the wheel liner, I think is fine. I think, I don't think it's ripped or torn. Okay, well, maybe a little bit there, but I don't think it is anywhere else. Um, I don't know if it's something they'll actually bother replacing or not. Push pin tabs are probably need to replace because they all pulled out. The biggest issue here, okay? I don't know if you can tell, but see how the wheel is kicked out to the left? Well, the steering wheel is straight. The other wheel is straight. But this wheel is, is trying to make a left turn. It thinks it's a NASCAR. So I can't really tell because I haven't really taken a super big look. But it looks like from what I can see is... Let's see if I can sneak the GoPro under here and get a better look while I'm thinking about it. But I think what happened was is the control arms are bent. <laughs> Not broke, bent. Maybe the tie rod? Don't know. Can't really see back in there. And uh, this wheel got a little bit of chewed up right here too, hitting a, hitting the tree. So. That's not a super big deal. The only other thing is here, um, just cause opening the door with the fender tweaked, it, you know, messed up some of the paint here on the uh, corner of the door that just can be touched up. Obviously that doesn't have to get replaced. Other And um, down here, I think it's fine. I think all this is fine. It just, it's unless whatever holds it together is not fine. Uh, that I mean the paint is fine and uh, you know this is just foam stuffing that just sits here in the fender just like that or somewhere in there I don't even know I guess for NVH purposes it's just weird just random pieces of foam just sitting in places I don't see any damage to the lower frame around the only thing I can see I was looking through here you can't even tell on camera but I'll go ahead and just I'll just tell you what I saw is you know on the frame round probably about right straight back this way there's some area where the paint had looked like it you know it's rubbed off what I think that is is just the fender liner rubbing against it because the tire is pushing on it in a way it shouldn't be I don't think there's actually any damage to it which is crucial because that's where things get really expensive and become problematic the car is insured. Uh, still waiting to see what happens there. I'm, you know, just starting the process. I'm not sure exactly what to expect. 
uh, but I don't think there will be any issues. Of course, I'll update everything once I get an update myself, but I mean, the, the car is going to live another day, you know. It's not like it's going to be gone and lost forever. It's just unfortunate to have this happen. Thankfully, it's not major damage, and it doesn't look like it's anything that's going to affect the drivability of the car once it's put back together. A little more upsetting because I was planning to make some videos here very, very shortly of uh, some parts installations. One part is an upgrade. The other one's replacing a part that should not have failed and has already prematurely failed. Of course, hell, that's when we get postponed until this gets taken care of, but I just hope the car's not out of my possession for too long. You know, God knows with, with how things are anymore. I mean, the work is one thing, but getting parts anymore is just a pain. You know, God, I know there's so many parts back ordered from Ford and I don't even know. I'm not sure how it's gonna go. I'm not sure. How long the car is gonna get held up? I could be without this car for a month or two, and of course, <laughs> this is the only thing I have to make content with. I don't have the Fiero or anything, so. That's gone to suck. So basically, if you see any content come from me, it's either gonna be <laughs> updates on this car, any, or just anything I can think of, really, filler content, or just repurposed old content, because uh, Mustang's gonna be out of commission for a while. I'm gonna say at least four weeks, which sucks. But like I said, the good thing is it's not like it's totaled, so you know we'll get the car back. It's just it now I just gotta wait and have the whole process done and whatnot. And it all could have been avoided if I wasn't being stupid. But hey, what are you gonna do? I can't change what happened. I can only just prevent it from happening again. That's the beautiful thing about life, you live and learn. So take that as the message of the day and uh, when things happen like this, is it upsetting? Absolutely, but don't let it get to you. That's just gonna take a little extra work, but we'll get back to where we were and things will be okay and it's like it will never happened. Now we have the knowledge to prevent it from happening again. So that's a great thing, but I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this video and until the next video, this was just an update on the situation so once i get an update myself i'll update you but anyways if you like the video please give it a thumbs up share with everyone you know and if you want to see more content you probably don't want to see more content like this and neither do i but go ahead if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and keep looking out for the next true car enthusiast video